we're going to start with a very decadent chocolate tart. A crispy almond crust filled with the richest chocolate ganache. So uh, to make the crust, uh, we're starting with a tart pan like this with a removable bottom. We start with um, grinding blanched almonds, and I have slivered blanched almonds here. We need uh, three tablespoons. quarter of a teaspoon of salt, one and a quarter cups of flour. And I'm always just dipping and measuring right out of a big jar like this. Do you keep your flour like this too? Yeah. Are you encouraged to do that at school? It's an easy way to keep it kind of aerated and nice. And butter, six tablespoons of butter. We always like to cut our butter up into nice little cubes. Quarter inch cubes are good. That's the style. <laughs> six tablespoons of sugar. Can always lose count. <laughs> Don't lose count. So to pulse this until it's all nicely combined. I think that's good. So right into an unbuttered, ungreased tart pan. And we have a nine inch removable bottom and you can just press it into this little tart shell um, I like using the bottom of a middle cup measure like this or half cup measure. It really makes the job go faster and, and you get a more even thickness to your crust. Is the butter cold? Uh, the butter is cold. Like a pastry, any pat brise, make it cold, bake it hot. <laughs> Golden rule. So there, that looks good. And bake it 350 degrees until golden brown. So right into the oven. Set your timer for 20 minutes. So ganache is uh, very versatile, as I said. When you cook it as a uh, tart filling, it's just cream and bittersweet chocolate. These are called little fevs. That's how chocolate is being packaged these days instead of great big blocks. It's easier to cut up. And you should cut these fevs into smaller pieces. And I find that serrated knife works wonders on chocolate. This works really well on big pieces too. So break it up into similar sized pieces and 12 ounces of chocolate for this particular ganache. This can be put into a glass bowl. I love that serrated oh, knife tip. Oh, you haven't done that? No, because oh. I used the other knife and my chocolate would start melting by the time I finally got it chopped because oh, it was no. taking so long. Oh yeah, no, this works like a dream. It's like so easy. Uh, have a whisk handy and uh, one and a quarter cups of heavy cream bring almost to a boil so that it's piping hot and that gets poured over this and just whisked until it's smooth. And this is what the crust looks like. I think that it's is beautiful. a very, and it's more crumbly and crispy than it looks, but it's very good with this tart. I love this crust. Do you polish your copper every time you use it? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> copper is so beautiful, but it has to be polished regularly. And the copper that's in front of you here on the counter, that's all more decorative. I use it, but it's more, uh, it's so pretty. I keep it out like that. Um, and uh, I, I love copper. I think it's just one of the most amazing cooking metals. So here we have our hot, hot cream and use heavy cream, very high quality heavy cream. I always look for organic. And then just stir this. It is versatile because made like this with the, with the hot cream, it's very liquidy and, and can be very smooth and silky. Then if you continue to whip it with a whisk, it gets thicker and thicker and thicker, like a, looks like a buttercream, it really. But look what's happened. Look what's happened yeah, to the chocolate. It's here. now so beautiful. It looks like the richest chocolate pudding. No sugar added, just the cream and the chocolate. Now just lightly stir. I don't like to whip in a lot of bubbles um, because I don't want bubbles in my tart. So I'm just being very careful to make sure all lumps of chocolate are melted and one teaspoon of vanilla. Don't forget. You might say why vanilla in chocolate, but it does add a nice depth of flavor. Okay, so now pour this right into your shell. You can let it stand at room temperature until it's set, or you can just put it right into the refrigerator. Don't cover it. Look how pretty. And you want to serve it cool, but not icy cold, because 
it's just too hard to eat when it's so, so cold. So I like to go like this. Make sure your counter's level. <laughs> if it's on a big slant, your, your tart is going to be all crooked. And I see a couple bubbles, which I will eliminate a smoothing motion. It's already setting, I can see. Okay, so just let that set. So here is the chilled and finished tart. Uh, now to serve, pop it out of the tart ring. It might be a little frightening, <laughs> but as long as it's chilled, the ring can come down your arm. But just put that on your cake pedestal and it is ready to serve. Would you like a little taste? Sure. Yes. And just slice right through that beautiful ganache. Now this is a crumbly crust, so you're gonna get a little bit of crumbs. And small pieces, rather than gigantic, because it is very rich. And I always find that making two cuts, two pieces, is better than the first one. First one's hard to get out. So by releasing uh, two pieces, easier to lift. Very nice, clean cuts. Very pretty. A little whipped cream for you. Sure. I just learned that Gonji yeah. is Mother Teresa's yes. first name. Mm -hmm. And she's from Albania. And that's where you're from. Yeah. In honor of <laughs> one of the most saintly people in the world. A piece for you. Enjoy. And these are red currants. Pungent berry. I love currants. Do you like the crust? It's so good. The nuttiness is perfect. Mm -hmm. So you see, this tart does belong in your chocolate repertoire. You'll all enjoy it very, very much. In my mind, a dense and fudgy devil's food cake isn't complete without an equally delicious frosting. And ganache is the answer. Not only can it fill a tart shell, it can also be whipped up into the most heavenly of frostings. And it's a slightly different recipe than the tart filling because it incorporates just a few other tastes. You're gonna love it, just wait and see. Now, so it's uh, very simple. Dutch processed cocoa, three quarters of a cup. We want to sift that because cocoa oftentimes has lumps in it. So sift that well. And you should have in your kitchen uh, various sized screens on your sieves. And then to this, just add three quarters of a cup of hot water. So you're basically making some very strong cocoa. Now we have some bittersweet chocolate, four ounces. This goes right into the same cocoa. And three quarters of a cup of sour cream. That's something a little different in this cake. The sour cream just adds a, a really nice, rich moisture to the, to the cake and a finer crumb. So get this all mixed together. Okay, this is going right into your cake batter in a few minutes. Okay. So now for the basic cake itself. Into your bowl, we're going to start with three and a half sticks of unsalted butter at room temperature. And uh, make sure it's at room temperature. It really speeds up the process. Add to the butter two and a quarter cups of granulated sugar. Now, it's a lot of sugar. It's a rich cake. <laughs> but all that sugar makes it even moister and denser. But in the meantime, while that's beating, um, why don't you measure off two cups of cake flour, a lighter flour than all-purpose flour, half a teaspoon of salt, and I'm using uh, kosher salt and one teaspoon of baking soda. Now, do you know why I'm using baking soda instead of baking powder? Because of the, there's one ingredient. Salt. No, sour cream. Sour cream. Okay. Sour cream has uh, acidity. acidity to it, yes. So now this looks very nice. I would urge you to scrape down your bowl before you add the eggs. And we have four whole large eggs. So add them one at a time. Okay. 
And then to the egg and sugar mixture, add one tablespoon of vanilla. So we're gonna add now uh, the chocolate and the dry ingredients, flour. Okay, so it's a little difficult to maneuver the rubber scraper in this deep bowl. So I am going to take this off and finish the mixing by hand. So these are nine inch by two inch cake pans that have been buttered and then fitted with a piece of parchment right in the bottom and then buttered again and the same Dutch processed cocoa powdered all over the butter. That way, if you used flour, what would happen? You would see a film of yeah, flour. White. Yeah, you'd see a film of white flour on a chocolate cake. So better to use the cocoa instead. Okay, so now put the batter in even amounts into each pan. And with an offset spatula, you can now uh, even out the top of all that cake batter. That looks good. So now right into a 350 degree oven for 45 to 50 minutes. And now for the creamiest, most delicious dark chocolate um, ganache buttercream that you've ever tasted. Not buttercream though, remember, it's ganache whipped. And it is one pound of semi-sweet or bittersweet chocolate. We're using bittersweet in this recipe. And we need to keep it soft and malleable and shiny, a quarter of a cup of corn syrup. Now, the easiest way to measure corn syrup that I've found is just to spray a liquid measure with a little bit of vegetable spray and then measure in your corn syrup. And then this should just go right into your chocolate. And now your hot, heavy cream, two and a third cups, pour that right over your chocolate. And you can just let it sit for a minute or so until it really melts the chocolate. And you can start whisking it. It's almost melted, but don't stop stirring until it is all dark. So let that cool. We have one that's already made so that we can continue with our gorgeous cakes. I have a cake round here on my nice cake decorating stand. The cake is a beautiful cake and we want to put some of our ganache in between the layers. Now see, this is just a, such a nice consistency. This is just so smooth. And that little addition of a quarter of a cup of corn syrup, look what it does. So incredibly smooth and shiny. Put your next layer on, and I'm turning this one upside down. I like the very flat bottom as the top. And now just get all the icing sort of up on the cake and then swirl it all over the sides and top. You can use a shorter spatula to go down the sides. I like to get the frosting all the way down to cover the paper round. And the reason I use a paper round is so that I can move the cake easily. Otherwise you'll have trouble in lifting the cake, moving it from place to place. Pretty. Okay, let it chill. And then before you serve it, take it out. Oh, at least a half an hour. So it gets a little tiny bit softer. But there is a great chocolate cake, which I could move to its final resting place before it's devoured. And I'll have to do that with a great big spatula. <laughs> okay, so now this is the scary part, moving it from place to place. But if you have the right spatula, you can do it nicely there. Perfect. 
So, how do you think it looks? I think it looks utterly delectable. And it's a special cake that you can make easily at home and share with your family and friends. Enjoy. Kids and grown-ups alike will adore this recipe for milk chocolate pudding cupcakes. When it comes time to eat them, what will you go for first? The milk chocolate pudding filling or the shiny ganache glaze on top or the cupcake itself? It's your choice. It's a lot of fun to make these cupcakes too, students, and um, very easy. Uh, it's very different from the molten chocolate cakes that became so popular a few years ago because these are really true cupcakes that you actually fill with a milk chocolate pudding. Let's start with the butter. It's one and a half sticks of unsalted butter and one and a third cups of sugar and two cups of all-purpose unbleached flour, baking powder, two teaspoons, and one and a half teaspoons of salt. Whisk this together. The whisking really does incorporate all the ingredients nicely, but if anything's at all lumpy, if your flour for some reason is lumpy, put it through a sieve. You don't want to see big specks of white flour in your milk chocolate pudding cupcake. And I also have um, five ounces of milk chocolate melted. Look how pretty that is. You need three eggs. They can be added now. And I break the egg into a bowl like that to add. Just make sure nothing is wrong with the egg. And one and a half teaspoons of vanilla. Now you can add your milk chocolate to this. Have your oven preheated to 350 degrees, by the way, it's important. It's been really hard to keep our chef whites white in the oh, chocolate Oh, when you're doing chocolate class, oh. <laughs> I can imagine. Lots of laundry. Do they have a laundry at the school? No. Oh, they do? They don't have washers and dryers? No. And we have uh, three quarters of a cup of whole milk. So that's the liquid to go with the, the dry. A little bit of liquid. And you can see this is a lighter batter than a devil's food cake because of the milk chocolate. There, that looks delicious. Don't overbeat. There, this looks great. This makes 18 medium-sized cupcakes. And we have these nice little dark brown papers, which I adore for chocolate cupcakes, it looks so pretty. And we're using a one ounce uh, scoop. And each of these papers takes two level scoops of batter. What did we do before we had all thought of using the ice cream scoop? We did two spoons, rubber scraper, fingers. <laughs> messy. It was so messy. Get all the batter into the cups, then put it right into the preheated 350 degree oven. And now we have to make our little bit of chocolate pudding and a simple ganache glaze for the top. And while they're baking, you can make all that. Get these right into your oven. Set your timer for 18 minutes. So now we have to make the filling for the beautiful cupcakes. Look how nice they are. And this chocolate pudding gets injected right into the centers of the cupcakes. And then a ganache coat over the top. Nice, simple. So uh, into a saucepan, and this is one tablespoon of Dutch processed cocoa. Now I keep it in a jar like this, tightly covered, and it's just perfect. And you need two tablespoons of cornstarch plus one teaspoon. and a quarter of a teaspoon of salt, and a quarter of a cup of granulated sugar. 
a cup of milk. and one egg yolk. So I'm going to save the white in this nice container. And egg whites do freeze very, very well. Do you do that? No. Yeah, they do. They freeze well and uh, you can save them in containers. Count them though. Make sure you know how many are in the container. Put this right on the stove and start cooking it. So it's boiled for one minute. It's nice and thick. And that is a beautiful pudding. While this is still piping hot, add three ounces of milk chocolate. It melts very quickly in this hot mixture. And some vanilla, a teaspoon. Okay, let this cool. And so now we're going to fill the cupcakes. Very simple, the chocolate pudding is nice and cold. And this is an injector tip. And just squeeze a little bit into the center of each cupcake. There. And now your ganache, it's eight ounces of milk chocolate, a half a cup of heavy cream, and two tablespoons of corn syrup. So these cupcakes are very nice because you can refrigerate them. The pudding inside keeps the cupcakes nice and moist. And then you can, of course, bedazzle further with some nice little chocolate curls on top. How do you do the chocolate curls? Oh, you can just melt a little chocolate, put it on the back of a cookie sheet and scrape. So there, I think these look superb. What do you think? They look great, perfect. Well, thank you so much for joining me today, and thank you all for watching. I'll see you on the next Martha Bakes. Fit a pastry bag with a round tip. Place the bag tip down in a tall glass for support. Fold the top over into a cup. Fill the bag using two separate pastry bags filled with contrasting colors. Twist the bag closed and begin applying pressure. This creates a soft serve look when piped into a swirl.